How's everybody doing this morning? Good morning. All right, so good to see a big crowd here enjoying the worship. And um, so let's get right into it, shall we? Okay, so we're going to look at a couple of verses here today uh, at uh, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 1 to 2. Uh, let's read uh, the Bible verses together, okay? So let's start. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, and especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Amen. So the message title today is Getting Back Into Running Shape. Getting Back Into Running Shape. Do we have any runners here today? Oh, wow. Okay. Marathon? Cross country? Current runner. That's good. Any past runners here? When you were in school, maybe? No? Okay. Okay. Have you ever struggled? Yeah? Have you ever struggled to finish a run? Or a race? You have? Okay, that's good. Because I have too. Let me tell you a story about myself. When I was in junior high school, I, uh, I spent a couple of years in a boarding school in England. And uh, we had this cross-country race called Steeplechase. Do you, want, do you know what a steeplechase is? Yeah? A steeplechase is basically a cross-country race with obstacles. So what kind of obstacles? It's like jumping over wood fences, uh, jumping over stone walls, jumping into ditches, crossing streams, and climbing out of ditches, something like that. And um, the, the race we had was about two kilometers long. So what happened was um, the, the boarding house that I stayed at, uh, we were short one volunteer runner. So I guess because I was new, and also at the time, I didn't speak a whole lot of English, so I was volunteered. I was volunteered to run, okay? <laughs> so... So um, I remember the weather that day was, uh, it was a cool, cool day with uh, light rain, a little bit like Vancouver winter. And uh, the first half of the course was relatively easy. Uh, after a few jumps and obstacles, uh, at the halfway point, I was at about uh, mid middle of the pack. But then the second half of the course was surprisingly difficult. Um, I remember climbing out of the last ditch. I was covered with mud and uh, including my shoes. My shoes were also covered with mud. And because of that, I started to slip. Every step I was slipping. And then I came to this uphill section of the course, of the trail, and uh, it was actually grass on the ground. So I was really, really slipping. I was like um, running on a treadmill, on an incline treadmill, going nowhere. It was sad and funny at the same time, sad because I was exhausted. Funny because while I was run on a treadmill, I saw a lot of people passing me. And apparently I was the only one with no traction. Um, so it was really, really tiring. All my energy was drained and I thought I was gonna collapse any moment. But to make a long story short, I survived. And uh, I hung on to the end and I finished at about 57th position out of 60 runners. And uh, so you can see that I slipped all the way from about 30 to about 57th. But I was glad. I was glad that I hung on to the end, persevered to the end, and finished the race. So the Christian life, it's often described as a race. But not because we are all running and competing to go to heaven. Uh, the Bible says that we all have sins. And Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for our sins. And he... He rose again to give us life. And if we believe in Jesus Christ, we are righteous before God and we have eternal life. But the Christian life is described as a race because God didn't promise us an easy life, a life without any trouble. In fact, we can expect there will be hardships. There will be struggle in our lives. There will be challenges. And so we must persevere to focus on Jesus and that's why the Bible says we have to run with endurance the race God has set before us. In fact, 
the Apostle Paul, when he knew he was about to be executed, he wrote to, um, he wrote to Timothy and he says, um, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me. God has called on every one of us to run with endurance, to fight the good fight, and to finish this race. So the question is, are you in good enough shape to run this race? Are we in good shape? So I don't know what's going on with your life right now. Maybe you are feeling really, really tired, both physically and spiritually. Uh, maybe all your energy is consumed by work, by your family responsibilities, by resolving uh, your conflicts, conflicts in your, in your relationships, in your marriage. Uh, maybe you are very tired from managing your health. You have a health condition that you need to uh, take care of. Like you are about to uh, fall off a treadmill. Maybe you feel like you have no more energy to run in this Christian way, this race. Maybe you're feeling, oh, I think I'm going to give up church. I think I'm going to quiet quit church. Or maybe you're feeling, okay, I'll come to church, but I'll just go through the motions. Now, the author of Hebrews understands how you feel. And 2,000 years ago, he, he wrote the book of Hebrews to encourage struggling Christians, Jewish Christians, under severe persecution at that time. He tried to encourage them not to drift away from Jesus. So let me share with you a couple of things. When you are feeling tired today in your Christian race, we need to remember two things, two truths. Number one, the Old Testament saints proved that it can be done. You can finish this race. Amen? Tell the person next to you, you can do it. We can do it. We can all do it. Hebrews 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, so let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Who are these witnesses? Well, they are the heroes of faith described in Hebrews 11. These people showed us different aspects of faith. And these witnesses are in fact not just spectators watching us. They are actually runners. They are actually runners ahead of us in this race. And by faith, they overcame similar obstacles that you are facing today. And they crossed the finish line. And now cheering for all of us. For example, if you look at Abraham, Abraham is the father of faith, right? He was called by God to leave his people and his father's household to a land God will show him. And God promised him to make him into a great nation. So imagine he was asked to leave everything behind, but he had no idea where God wanted him to go. Just leave. And God promised him, I'll make you into a great nation. Just leave. Good things will come. I will bless you. So in a very similar way, today we are called by God to give our lives and our priority to Jesus Christ. Our priority is not wealth, is not comfortable lifestyle, not a big house and nice cars. And Jesus promises us an abundant life. A life so good, described in the Bible as no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has conceived. So, Today we know that God's promise to Abraham came to pass, right? Because Abraham was blessed by God tremendously because of his obedience. And he is the father of the nation Israel. So I think Abraham would, would urge every single one of us to persevere in this race. Because he knows with certainty that God's promises to us will never fail. Now, going back to my story about the steeplechase race, the story, I, I finished at about 57th position. And I want to tell you that I immediately turn around and cheer for the next guy. But no, I didn't do that. At that moment when I crossed the finish line, half dead, half alive, I was just 
so happy and so relieved that there are actually three more guys behind me, slower than me. And everyone's attention will soon turn from me to them. Um, so I was recovering from this near-death experience, and then all of a sudden these last runners appeared on the horizon. And then everybody at the finish line, many of them had actually finished the race earlier. They started to shout and cheer for them. So of course I, I blended in, right? I cheer for them as well. And, and, um, and I, I learned, a, I learned a, a thing about there's a big difference between cheering as a spectator and cheering as a runner who had actually gone through all the hardships and finished the race. Because I knew, when I was looking at them, I knew all the mental and physical battles that, that's going on in their, in their mind, in their body. And those guys who were running towards me, out of breath, and struggling to put one foot in front of the other. Because that was me. That was me two minutes ago. And I had no doubt that if I could finish the race, they could do, and they will finish the race. And they may be suffering right now, but they will soon celebrate. So today I want to tell you that Jesus will not let go of you, no matter how tired you are. Jesus will not let go of you, and heaven is cheering you on. Amen? So keep running. Keep running. Obey God step by step, and you will make it. The second point I want to say is that when you are exhausted in this race, you need to remember you are part of the winning team. You are part of the winning team. Hebrews 11. Now, this is going back to Hebrews 11, um, 39 to 40. It says, These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what God had been promised. What had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. It's not easy to understand this Bible verse. Basically, the Old Testament saints, they lived faithfully till the end, yet none of them received what had been promised them. In other words, they all died. They all died before the Messiah, Jesus Christ, came. Their faith is looking forward to a Messiah arriving. That, that's their faith. Verse 40 says, God has something better for us, the New Testament saints. That's us. What is this something better? It is the fact that we, on the other hand, we look back at Jesus. Our faith is we look back at Jesus, his life, and what he did, what he taught. So we get to learn about his birth. We get to learn about his teachings, to learn about his suffering on the cross for us. We get to see the fruit of God's promises. And this is why it says there's something better for us. And then, verse 40 also says, the faith heroes in the Old Testament would not be made perfect without us. What does that mean? You see, the Old Testament saints, they look forward to a Messiah. We, on the other hand, look back at our Messiah, our Christ, Jesus. But we are together. We all belong to the kingdom of God. All our names are written on the book of life. So, when they say made perfect, the idea is that it's similar to made complete. It's like they and us, we are complete together because we are all children of God. So one way to look at this is that there is a sense of unity among all the children of God, past, present, and future. We all belong to the kingdom of God. And we will all receive glorification glorification at the same time in the future. So in a sense, there's this unity among us so that they are not complete without us and we are not complete without them. And without you, we are definitely not complete. Amen? So we all belong to this team. You know, one of the most popular destina tourist destinations um, in Europe, it's a place called Venice in Italy. It's a very unique beautiful place, picture-perfect kind of a, a area, a city. And uh, my wife and I uh, are very fortunate. We had the opportunity um, to, to go there, to visit Venice many years ago. 
And um, I actually spent a weekend there uh, with my camera, taking lots of photos. And you cannot possibly take a bad photo in, in, in Venice. That's my opinion. It's, it's so nice. And I really enjoyed uh, a lot of gelato, espresso, pasta, seafood, and everything. It was really, really nice. But it just doesn't feel very complete. You know why? Because I have not told you one very crucial detail about our visits. When I was there, my wife wasn't there. And when she visited Venice, I wasn't there with her. The reason is that we used to work in the same Italian company. And uh, we had a big office near Venice. So she went to Venice. We, she went to the, the, the office for a business trip. And then afterwards, pay a visit to Venice. So that's why I wasn't there. Another year, I was there for a meeting. And afterwards, I stayed behind for one weekend and really enjoyed the trip. But she wasn't there with me. So in a way, as nice as the trip was, it wasn't complete in my mind. And I've all, I've always, we have always talked about it. And I said to her, you know, someday, God willing, we'll go there again together. And that would make our trip complete. <laughs> so do you realize that you belong to Jesus forever? You belong to this team. Your name is written on the book of life. So the team is not complete without you. So hang on to Jesus. You can make it. Okay? So now that we are determined to run this race and finish this race as a faithful child of God, there's an important question we need to ask every single one of us ask ourselves every day, how do I run faster? How do I run faster? What will help me reach the finish line? And I think Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2, give us a few clues. So let me share with you three things that we need to remember we need to do. First thing is, if we want, want to get back into shape, we need to strip off any extra weight. Strip off any extra weight. You know, serious runners, they are willing to invest in very expensive shoes, clothing, and uh, even sunglasses. And uh, their best equipment has one feature, one common feature, lightweight. It has to be very lightweight. So we have to ask ourselves, what are the extra weights that we are carrying and slowing us down in the pursuit of God? What are the extra weights that, is, that are slowing us down in the pursuit of God? Can you ask the person next to you, what is slowing you down? What is slowing you down? You notice how confused they look? Yeah? It's not an easy question to answer, isn't it? It's rather open. It's an open question. So, it's like the, the guy is like, oh. So, I think instead, a better question to ask ourselves is, what is preventing us from living out the purposes God has for us? And also, maybe we can ask ourselves, what is preventing us from living out the purposes God has for us in Thrive Church? Do you remember what are the five purposes of Thrive Church? A-E-I-O-U. Do you remember that? Okay. A stands for alive. We are here to worship Jesus. E stands for expectant. We are here to grow more like Jesus. And I stands for involved. We are here to serve Jesus with our talents, right? O stands for out loud. We are here to lead others to Jesus. And U stands for united. We are here to love one another, to love Jesus' family, his church. Amen? So I think we can ask ourselves, what is getting in our way from doing these? What is getting in our way from doing all these? Maybe you spend too much time on social media, you know, every day. And uh, maybe you spend too much time on your hobby or even work, you know, your career maybe. Because you, are very, you have a very exciting project at work and it's taking a lot of your spare time. Time that instead you could be praying and reading the Bible. Maybe you have a fear of, uh, of failure, a fear of taking risk that is preventing you from meeting new friends, uh, asking people to, uh, to go to church or trying out a new exciting ministries. Maybe you are still haunted by your past hurts or mistakes that you made and your heart have not been fully healed. And that's preventing you from 
loving other people. Some people are simply burdened by responsibilities that they cannot get out of. For example, I used to know uh, a person who had to take care of her mom um, every day, almost 24 hours a day, and uh, she could not go to church. And it, it, sometimes it can be very, very, very tiring and very frustrating, especially for someone who really wants to go to church and to meet others and to pray for others and love others. Um, you know, I, I want to say something about that. If you, are a good, if you are being a good spouse, a good parent, a, a responsible caregiver, you are serving God too. You are serving God with what you are doing. So you need to keep on doing. But what you need to be aware of is your emotional burden. You know, your weight, your extra weight could be your emotional burden, which you need to pray and lay down, give the burdens to God. So no matter what kind of weight you have, you can always come to Jesus and lay down your burdens and ask the Holy Spirit to redirect our lives to serve God's purpose. So the second thing we need to know is that to get back into shape, we need to get rid of sins. I think this one's obvious, right? Get rid of sins. Sins can trip us up, slow us down, prevent us from reaching the full potential God has created in all of us. Uh, I think a good example would be Samson in the Bible. He was a judge, a leader of the Israelites for 20 years. And um, he delivered the Israelites from the hands of the Philistines. Unfortunately, Samson had a great, has a really great moral weakness. He was a womanizer, and he led a very sinful lifestyle, which ultimately led to his family's and also his own suffering. Samson's story is a great reminder of us that God is merciful, and God can use even sinful people to accomplish his, his, um, his purpose. But however, we have to remember, sins will bring dire consequences into our lives. And uh, I, I don't think we need to elaborate on the variety of sins. So I think most of them are quite obvious. If you are being affected by sins, you need to confess and seek forgiveness from God and pray to Jesus. Seek God's power to change. But I do want to say a few things about uh, what is generally considered the greatest sin. We are often blind to it. You, you don't normally, you don't often hear people admit to this. Do you know what is the greatest sin? Pride. That's right, amen. Pride. Pride is the greatest sin. Other sins pull us away from God. But pride put ourselves above God. And that's very dangerous. Proverbs 8, 13, it says, All we fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption and perverse speech. Proverbs 11, verse 2, it says, Pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. James 4, verse 6, And he gives grace generously, as the scriptures say. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, I hope the two words God opposes send shivers down your spine. Remember why Satan was cast out of heaven. Because of his pride. He wanted to be like God. We don't want to be opposed by God, do we? No. And God says he hates pride and arrogance. He opposes the proud. And pride, pride leads to disgrace. If you think these are very, very strong statements, you are absolutely right. These are very strong warning to us. Now, you might ask, if we are often blind to it, if we are often blind to, to, to pride, then how do we know? How do we even know we have this problem? Well, today I want to offer um, four simple questions as a start to examine our hearts, okay? Obviously, the list goes on, but these are four questions that we can start asking ourselves to examine ourselves. The first one, are you willing to pray? Are you willing to listen to God's advice? Or are you always right? I go to church, but I don't need God's advice. I know what I'm doing. Is that you? Or maybe 
there are certain areas of your life that you really hold on to. You want to control. You don't want God to interfere. Is that you? Are you willing to seek advice from a mature Christian or an objective friend? This, this is especially true when you are in a conflict, when you have conflict in your relationship. Are you willing to seek advice from someone? Do you tend to find people around you at fault? Oh, he's always wrong, I'm always right. Or maybe we are both wrong, but my fault is very little, and his is always very big. Do you know someone like that? <laughs> are you too good to do certain tasks? And maybe some tasks are beneath your dignity. So they, these are four questions that we can start asking ourselves. Pride and humility is a big topic that really deserves a, a, you know, a series of sermons. But, uh, but if, we are, if we feel that we are affected by this, by pride, I think we can, there are three things as a first step we can take to redirect our lives towards humility. The first one is if you think that there are certain areas that you, you are proud, the first thing is to admit that you are proud. Admit that you are proud and that you have ignored God in this area first. The second thing is think about yourself less. Not think less about yourself, but think about yourself less. Think more about other people, you know, about their needs. Try to appreciate other people around you instead of just trying to find fault. And the third thing to do is to pray and read God's words as a first gesture of humility. Go back to God. Draw near to God. Okay, the, fir the third point, the third thing to get back into running shape, we must have faith in Jesus. Amen? We must have faith in Jesus. Hebrews 12 Verse 2, it says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion, who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding his shame. Now he is seated in a place of honor beside God's throne. There are numerous sermons, explanation, commentary on this Bible verse alone. But I just want to keep it simple today. To run the race with endurance, we need to have faith in Jesus. We must have faith in Jesus. That's why the Bible says, keep your eyes on Jesus. We must have faith in Jesus. Believe Him. He is the one who initiated our faith, started our faith journey. And definitely, He's the one who will carry us through. We must trust God with our future. Even if we face tremendous obstacles. You know, when many years ago, um, this is back in Hong Kong. I, I got a call one day from our church administrator. And she said to me, she asked me, Tim, I need to know the name of your small group. And I asked her, what are you talking about? What small group? And then she said, she asked, she said uh, well, you and your wife, Carmen, you guys been practicing leading, right? Yeah. You guys went to a two-day training camp, right? Yeah. Okay. You guys are officially small group leaders. I need, to, I need the name of your small group now. So I said, you have got to begin. Just wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need time to digest this. And I also need to talk to my wife first. And then she said, sure, talk to her, but don't take too long. I need the name. So I, I immediately called my wife. Uh, Carmen, and, um, and uh, we squeezed every ounce of creativity out of our brain. And finally, we came up with the name called Timson and Carmen Small Group. <laughs> and <laughs> everything went well for a while. You know, everyone was happy and a group. Uh, at the beginning, we gathered at home in our small apartment, and then the group got bigger and bigger, and uh, we moved to a, a church venue, a, big, a bigger room in a church building. And then after that, some people got busy, and they started to uh, miss small group and Sunday service. And then there were some arguments, some misunderstanding among some members. Some got, people got offended. They left. We tried to encourage everyone. Um, 
Um, some people listened, some people didn't listen, and we didn't know how to handle all the problems. And maybe we even said things too bluntly, and maybe we even offended people as well. So we made a lot of mistakes, and some people were not happy. And I, I, you know, I, I started to feel really frustrated among, you know, I was among all the work, among church, family, everything. I started to feel really frustrated. I felt like I wasn't really cut out for leading. I thought if I'm a good leader, then there shouldn't be any problem in a small group. So I pray to God. I started to question God's decision. Lord, are you sure about me, about us leading? Because judging from what I'm seeing right now, judging from the results so far, I don't think I know what I'm doing. Have you made a mistake? Maybe I'm the problem here. And at one point, I seriously considered giving up. Um, but at, at the time, it was, we, we thought it was not a good time to just stop the group and just hand over back to other leaders. It just wasn't the right time. So we decided to continue and battle on. And, um, and I did some more serious praying, not just you know, the typical prayer, oh, Jesus, give me wisdom, uh, lead us, that kind, that's good too. But I went much deeper than that because I, I, I basically I pour out all my feelings, my frustration, everything. My frustration, my complaints, uh, what he said, what I said, uh, what I think we could have done, my proposal, my take on the situation, everything. And it was a really genuine conversation with God and uh, for many days, for many days. And, I've, and I felt that the Holy Spirit, um, he didn't give me all the answers, but he gave me enough insights. And at the end, I felt that God was telling me that we need to continue. We should continue leading this group. Although, despite my head, my brain keeps telling me that I'm not cut out for this. I think God was telling me that I should continue there are things that we need to repent, mistakes that we made. Um, we need to stop focusing on attendance, the numbers. Uh, we need to stop blaming everything on ourselves. We just have to keep trying, keep trying, trusting God, trusting the Holy Spirit. Try to do things that pleases God and leave everything else to Jesus. And I struggle with that. I struggle with all that for many days. Until one day, um, the final prayer on this subject, I, did, I, this is, I prayed this prayer during a worship session because that day I could not worship. There was so much on my mind. I could not possibly sing, continue to sing. So everyone was singing, and I stopped singing, and I closed my eyes and just prayed. And I said to God, I said, Jesus, if this is, not what, if this is what you want, okay then I'll continue with this until the day you tell me to stop. So if the numbers go down and down even to three people, we'll just keep going until you tell me to stop. You or you tell the church to tell us to stop. So that's what we did. We continue. And in the years to come, of course, we had more problems. We had good times. We had very good times. We had very tough times. But we found the strength to continue because of Jesus. We found the strength to persevere. And, uh, and finally, four years ago, we heard it loud and clear from God to leave. And so we left and came back to Canada. And uh, for the first time last month, my family went back to Hong Kong to pay a visit. And uh, we actually met up with a lot of brothers and sisters from our, from our church and also from our small, former small group. And uh, most of them are still in church. We were so happy to see them. They, despite what's been going on the last four years in Hong Kong, most of them are still in church and growing. Their faith has grown. And there's, some of them are serving in new ministries. Um, we were so happy to see them. But they were even more happier to see us. You know, like seeing a long, long lost family. And uh, every time we see them, there are more gifts for us. We couldn't even know how to reciprocate. And one of the leaders um, told us, 
Well, you guys do know that they really liked you, right? They really loved you, right? You do know that, right? <laughs> and, and we know that. We knew that. But to see all that in their actions, to see that in their face, their smile, their action, it was really, really something. Seeing that and feeling that, really feeling that, feeling that, it's totally different. And we were so happy to see everyone thriving in their faith journey. And we, we've had many ups and downs, good times and bad times uh, in the past. And it was always Jesus who sustained us throughout all these times. And I'm so glad that we actually persevered. So to close off today, I want to say, let's get rid of any extra weight, anything that is stop, slowing us down in a pursuit of God, okay? Let's hang on to Jesus, no matter what life throw at us. Because God promises us a reward is so good. It's beyond our imagination. And someday, I'm pretty sure, we'll all look back and we'll realize that life in Jesus Christ is indeed worth living. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so I'm going to invite you guys all to stand so that we can pray together. And I also want to welcome, uh, if you are a first-time guest here, if you are new to Thrive or new to the Christian faith, once again, I want to welcome you. Thank you for spending your time with us. I hope the message, uh, you find the message helpful. I don't know what you're feeling today. Maybe you're feeling like your life is like running on a treadmill, no breaks, and uh, just more burdens every day. I want you to know that Jesus has offered to give you rest. And God loves you. And you can find rest in Jesus Christ. So I want to invite you to receive Jesus Christ into your heart today. If you're on site, I will lead you into in a prayer uh, in just a moment. If you are watching us online, you can scan the QR code on your screen to see the prayer. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you that because you love me, you died on the cross to pay for my sins and that you rose again to give me life. Today, I open up my heart and ask you to forgive my, me of my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Today, I place my trust, not in what I do, but in what you've done for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Would you give God a big hand, a big shout today? everyone, welcome to Thrive Church. We're so excited to see you all today. My name is Christine. I hope you had a fantastic time here today at Thrive. Before we end off, let's jump into some announcements and take a look at what's coming up here at Thrive. If this is your first time joining us, we want to show you how much we appreciate you being here today by giving you a Thrive water bottle. Simply scan the QR code at the back of your seat or visit mythrive.info and click new to Thrive to fill out the connect card. If you joined us online, we'll mail you the gift as soon as possible. And if you're here with us today at Leapon Place, please drop by the Welcome Center tent by the entrance door after the service to pick up your gift. Once again, thanks so, so much for worshiping with us today. Here at Thrive, we plan our calendar year from September to August, and I'm so excited to let you know that we'll be kicking off our brand new ministry year in just two weeks on Sunday, September 17th. Kickoff Sunday is always one of the biggest Sundays of the year, and you absolutely need to be here as Pastor JB reviews a new theme and casts the new vision of the upcoming year. So mark down the date. We can't wait to kick off a new year with all of you. Speaking of a new season, 
I want to once again take this opportunity to invite you to be a part of Thrive's community by joining a serving team. There's no better way to kick off a new season than using your God-given talents to start making an impact in people's lives by serving Jesus and His church. To sign up for a serving team, visit mythrive.info. Last but not least, we're saving the best and the most exciting news for the end. Drum roll, please. Our very first single, Adonai All of My Days, has officially landed and is now available for streaming on Apple Music, Spotify, and more. This is such a special moment for all of us at Thrive because it's the very first time our church has ever publicly released a music single. Now, we're not claiming to be the next big thing, but we're so thrilled to share this song with all of you. So get on your favorite streaming service, search All For One Name, which is the name of Thrive's worship band, and add this song to your playlist today. I'm sure you will love listening to Adonai all of my days in your car, on your phone, and wherever you are. All right, so that concludes our announcements today. If you believe in the mission and vision of Thrive and would like to contribute towards it, please head on over to mythrive.info and click online giving. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Once again, if you're new to Thrive, we can't wait to see you at the Welcome Center tent by the entrance door after the service. Enjoy the rest of the week. See you soon.